if you can change your names to your name along with your name put in the location where you're from as well um, it'd be really great for Sahil to know where you're located and we'll just start in very soon um welcome back to our series of accelerator workshops i know we had paused for a while for the global finals and the india finals which also concluded yesterday um hope you did get to see the winners and the information on social media please do follow us if you have not and you'll get to know more about the winners and their companies so we can give them all a good round of applause again we're very pleased to have today Sahil Nair. He's the Associate Director of KPMG, a strategic partner to businesses, a great promoter of talent and technology, a behavioral scientist, design thinker, a great storyteller, and a writer. Sahil has about 10 years of experience in human resources in KPMG India. He's also a visiting faculty in a number of business schools in IIMs and IITs in India. Today, he is going to give us a view and a great understanding about how we can manage people and grow people and grow talent and who will help grow your company forward. So without much further ado, Sahil, give the mic to you. All right, uh, Shamina, thank you so much. Uh, Thai woman, uh, thanks a lot. It's an absolute pleasure. It's an honor. It's a privilege to be with all of you. So whichever part of the world you guys are in, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. And of course, there's still some time for good night in India though. So uh, thank you so much, Monica, for coming on video. It really feels nice. I was finding it very weird looking at my own self on screen. Uh, so thank you for coming on video. All right, so I think um, we are together for the next one and a half hour, and uh, I think it's going to be our collective responsibility to make the best of this one and a half hour. And I promise you, I can't do anything without your support. So the more of you who would like to come on a video, I think the better it is. I was in a session this morning. It was a closed group where we were doing a, a very small cohort of 12 of us and all of us were on video and it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, so someone's hair was all over the place. Someone was having their money coffee. Uh, someone was actually sitting in shorts. So it's absolutely fine. Be very comfortable. Uh, and uh, Dr. Vanita, thank you so much. Nice to see you there. So everyone be absolutely comfortable. I promise this is not going to be a monologue. It's not going to be a typical session of what you have as a preconceived notion in your mind about human resources. My endeavor is going to break that myth and we're going to do it together. So uh, the request goes out one more time. Uh, please come on video in case you don't. The probability of me picking on you is much higher. So uh, that's, that's going to be uh, the entire uh, caveat and the context before we get started. Dharti, thank you so much. I remember the first time you invited me and you're at a board retreat, but you still took the time out to be with us today. So really, really appreciate that, uh, Dharti. All right. So we have more and more people coming in on video and that's brilliant because that's all that we need today. Smriti, I know you're walking and crossing rooms, but that's absolutely fine. Uh, be wherever you are, you're on your mobile. That's all right. That's super. Sonali, welcome. I think so. Uh, I'm, I'm helping people warm up. So, Sucheta, you're in Bombay, not very far away. Uh, Shustisti says, I'm traveling. Yes, we could hear the voice, Shusti. You were having a conversation with somebody in a regional language. Which language was that? You want to put it on the chat? Is that Shruthisti, Tamil? Okay, you're a Tam Bram. Okay, lovely. Samia, nice to see you. Is that a virtual background? No, 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 sorry about that. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. Okay, it's a virtual background. All right. Let me check who else do we have with us here today. Abhishek, do you want to give me company? I'm feeling lonely with so many women out here. Abhishek Rotkar, 
कुठे आहे तुम्ही विनिता मोरे ओके आय एक्सक्यूज यू डोंट वरी आय वॉन्ट पिक ऑन यू वेर इज फरा द बेबी गराज दॅट साऊंड व्हेरी इंटरेस्टिंग फरा वेर आर यू the baby garage so, it seems I, to be I'm here baby. i can hear you very well <laughs> <laughs> would you join us on video i'm sorry i'm uh, i'm stuck because it's weekend so i'm stuck with the kids at home but i'm very interested about joining the session so i couldn't miss it okay so, lovely lovely all righty okay let's get moving okay so it is i have nine boxes on my screen um, smriti if you want to just turn your phone the other way we'll get a uh, uh, much yeah and just go and do that auto rotate on your phone so we'll get you there perfect while smriti does that let's get started um we spent the first 10 minutes doing hygiene stuff to get people on video to say hi hello whatever um let's spend the next 10 minutes getting to know each other yeah because talking to strangers is not my forte so uh, let's keep the cliche stuff away i know your name i know the chapter you're from i know a little bit about what your dreams are uh, in terms of what you guys are figuring out anamika that's absolutely fine uh, i was down with fever this morning so that's absolutely okay so whatever sails your boat uh, thank you for being participated so guys um, i think oh sorry ladies uh, but yeah we using it very neutrally so guys ladies whatever We're all um, about inclusivity, Fahel. It's all right. Absolutely, all about inclusivity. So, all gender-neutral conversation. So, um, let's do it this way. Let's go around the table, and I would love to know a little bit about yourself that you almost don't know. Now, you're going to say that's really weird, right? If I don't know something about myself, how am I going to tell you about that? And therefore, I use the word almost. There's something known as a Johari window, which is the blind spot that we don't really know about ourselves. But there is something that we know, but we're just trying to figure out more about. So it's like peeling the epidermis and going a couple of layers beneath. And I think that's going to be really important and fun and exciting and interesting. So I'm not going to pick on anyone, but whoever wants to go first, and then like in school, we used to go ahead and pass on the baton. we'll keep passing on the baton i don't know what i don't know of course dharti and therefore we're not going to ask you what you don't know we're going to ask people what they kind of don't know but they are figuring out so let me start off doing the demo because it's always good to lead by example so i'm going to tell you a little bit about what i'm figuring out in the last 2 3 weeks in the last 2 3 weeks i have been spending a lot of time with myself introspecting about why i am not the same person that i was pre covid and this has been bothering me a lot over the last 2 3 weeks touch wood thankfully i haven't contracted covid but pre covid which is feb of 2020 i was a person today i choose to believe i'm a slightly different person and i want to figure out why has that change happened without my permission are you with me so far yes no maybe yes okay yes. vanita does the perfect hands up going back to school okay you're with me i sat back i spent some time with myself i made some notes and i said what has fundamentally changed so i'm not going to talk about the cliche stuff that oh we're working from home there's a zoom fatigue blah 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 you know all of that right so i'm not going to repeat the same jazz but what fundamentally changed for me is every friday evening from work i would head to the airport i would catch a flight to some city in india the last flight out on a friday saturday sunday i would be at an mba college and on a sunday night i would take the last flight out into bombay and that was something i loved doing and i was just so blessed and so lucky that some college in some part of the country would just call me for a guest lecture or as a visiting faculty to teach their students and believe you me that kept me going monday to friday the flight out on a friday night the 24 to 48 hours of break 
of interacting with the young kids, challenging status quo, talking, debating, ideating, brainstorming kept me alive. The last 12 to 18 months, of course, many of that reduced significantly. Some of it got transitioned onto Zoom, but that in-person connect just vanished. And that fundamentally started changing me at my core. Because what happened on weekends for me was pressing the release button. And that release button vanished from my life. And each one of us need that release button. At times you may say, okay, I'll pick up the phone and speak to my best friend. That may be a release button for you. For Sonali, it may be something else. For Sucheta, something else. For Mohini, something else. But we all need that release button. And now, while colleges are opening up and I'm going to start traveling and board my first flight, which is going to happen soon, I still haven't found my release button. I'm still finding it. Okay. So that's a little bit about me. I don't expect you to give me a three-minute introduction about yourself. Maybe a sentence is good or 30 seconds per person is good, but we'll quickly go around the table to get to know you beyond what you know yourself. Like that, he says, I don't know what I know about what I don't know about myself. And that was not a tongue twister, but back to you. So whoever wants to go first, tell us something about you that you're exploring that you fully haven't explored, but you're trying to figure out. It could be about your work. It could be about personal life, professional life, whatever. Whoever wants to go first. Like Amitabh Bachchan style in KBC, aapka samay shuru hota hai ab. And Manita unmutes herself and Sonali also unmutes herself. Fastest finger first. <laughs> uh, shall, shall I go? Yeah, go for it. Okay, yeah. So I'm, I'm Sonali. I am co-founder of Tales. So my, my founder, Mansi, uh, had, had joined the Thai thing, thing, but I had been joining today. So uh, one thing what I want to tell about myself is like, I used to be very social in my childhood and, and till, till last three, four years also. But then um, some, some mishaps happened in my families. And after that, I'm not social at all. The, totally off from... Uh, with whatsapp facebook everywhere i'm just trying to bring back that myself of mine like where i used to be so too much social to people all right lovely sonali thank you for being the first person to go up it takes a lot of courage so kudos to you well done who do you want to pass the bait into uh someone had raised uh, along with me right the hand so so the same okay let's give it to vanita okay so uh, during this COVID time, I lost a lot of uh, dear ones. Mm. Because of that, uh, I was just wondering, I started the startup at a age, I'm right now 50. So it might happen to me, then what will happen to my startup? So I don't want uh, my startup to just keep and hold. So I'm trying to find out uh, a kind of uh, SOP so that whatever is there in my brain, somewhere so that be passed on to the next one so i am trying to figure out what actually is there in my mind for uh, my company vision for next 25 years not for three four years so that is the biggest task i am doing right now uh, <laughs> which you will say what i'm trying to find it out because i really don't know what i am planning and uh, what should i write there are pitches going on where we are making our roadmap for three years four years but what I will do for this company for next 25 years is the challenge which I have taken for myself. Uh, and I wanted to figure it out what actually I want from the company. Got it. Got it. Lovely, lovely, Vanita. Thank you so much for sharing. Do you want to pick the next person who you would like to hear from? Ji. Sorry? Monica. Okay, lovely. We have a couple of hands that have also gone up and you can see Monica on video. So Monica, over to you. Yes, thank you, um, Vanita, and thank you to be here with all those people, uh, a lot of the, you from India and of Indian heritage. I am the only one from Germany here, and I actually studied social anthropology, but India was not on my menu. We were told this is a too complicated society for social anthropologists, stick with those that uh, do not have their own script. 
So one of the things I'm find, trying to figure out this year since I joined Thai Germany in January is how to um, work with Indians and also um, in general of working with people. I founded Gateway to Language Learning all, um, six years ago already, but it was um, more on the self-employed um, way. And I, with COVID coming in, I did not have that mix of going out and teaching in person and um, doing work on my computer. I was confined to my home office suddenly. And another thing that, that had to be done was go to go digital. It's another thing that's pretty new to me. And I also had my first intern this year and we did half in person at my office and half um, remote. So leading people was another thing that was new for me. And it also plays out in my personal life because my daughter's turning 18 pretty soon and this is transitioning from leading a youth, a youngster, to leading an adult that, who is looking up to me. So there's, there's a lot of things that I'm trying to figure out this year. Lovely, Monica. Thank you. Very nice. Very comprehensive in your answer. You want to pick someone else? A couple uh, of hands I'd, up. Yeah, I'd like to hear from Nupur. Hi, Monica. Thank you so much. So uh, first of all, I'm really sorry that my camera is not working since last 10 minutes I'm trying to figure out. I'm very, I'm not a very tech savvy person. Um, my problem is exactly opposite to Sonali's problem. So basically I am in my personal life a very introvert person, but professionally I have to be very extrovert because I, uh, you know, I have my own consultancy firm in renewable and EV. I have earlier worked with one of, uh, with some big fours also. So uh, at times I get really confused that what person I am, because professionally I have to be very, I have to do a lot of networking. I have to talk with a lot of people, but personally I do not like to converse much with people. So sometimes when I attend conference where, you know, I have been invited as speakers, I interact with a lot of people. And at the end of the day, I realize this is not me, what I'm doing. Like, like I'm a very introvert person. So yeah. That's the problem. And professionally, if you ask what problem I'm facing, it is to choose the best talent. How in that one hour of interview, I can decide that this is the right candidate for my consultancy form. So these are the two problems I would like to convey. All right, lovely, Nupur. Uh, you want to pick someone else who you'd like to hear from? Uh, Anushri. Hello, hi, I'm Audible. Yes, go for it. Okay. Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank you, sir, uh, for like interacting with us like this. Um, it's a really a great opportunity for me. So I'm Anushri Goswami from Nazme Hayat. I am basically from Prayagraj, UP. And uh, I, from, I am from the Thai Lucknow chapter. So basically, uh, I, didn't, I don't come from the fa family business background. I think most of us are not uh, in this field. So this is very new thing for me. Uh, to uh, like I had this passion in literature field and I, I just wanted to do something for others for others writers and authors so I just uh, came up with this idea of uh, making the, uh, my own platform in this literature field so creating my own online platform so basically I, uh, I am uh, really exploring myself uh, in this age uh, to know about more about myself that what like this is just not a passion and i am uh, like uh, getting a lot of interest in this I, I i really like these things basically this networking and marketing and management leadership all these things i really like but uh, i was not that much confident girl in my school time and college time uh, as you can say so uh, yeah this this uh, opportunities and these things like these events are also uh, helping me a lot to gain my confidence and also to uh, do good in my business as well so thanks a lot that's it from my side super banashree thank you so much thank you for sharing wish you all the best uh, anyone else you like to pick on 
Yeah, Farah, the baby cat. Okay. Uh, here, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for passing on the mic. So, um, for me, um, actually, what I'm going through nowadays, and especially when I had my startup, so I've been uh, in corporate life for. For more than 14 years, I've used to be like the, the, the good employee, the one who excels, the one who always got promoted. I thought that maybe like my refusal to to do mistakes or stuff like this would uh, make me like not at this uh, at risk taker, but actually with my startup now, I'm figuring out that no, I'm I'm very. Uh, like pro uh, risk taking i love to check the opportunities i i love to try even and i'm i'm very uh, like tolerating the concept that even if it fails no problem like no we can always do more so um, i'm 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 trying to see how far i can go with that concept so hopefully with no much damage but uh, yeah this is the new aspect i'm trying to reveal from my personality Wonderful, wonderful. So, Farah, I think so you've come a long way in terms of your journey. Uh, yeah, so uh, honestly, I came to do my startup when I figured that there's no more ceiling I can go to in my corporate life. And I wanted to try more things out with, uh, with no boundaries. So, yeah, so it's like starting over, but it's nice. Interesting, interesting. Who would you like to hear from, Farah? So let's see who else have their hands up. So I don't see anyone having his hands up. <laughs> so uh, now it gets difficult. Now, yeah. So now we. But have one person has put her hand up. Simriti. Okay, Smriti, go for it. All right, hey everyone. I'm Smriti Zanaveld. I'm the founder of Lazarus 3D. I'm based out of Oregon, um, West Coast in the USA. Um, so I've learned a lot about myself uh, over the last two years, I guess. Um, at the beginning, um, when I was when we were starting out, I used to be really protective about my products, like everything we would make. I would be very defensive. Um, and if the customer said that, you know, oh, you know, like I want this changed or that changed, I would be very defensive. I would be like, no, but this is what you asked for. So like, why are you arguing with me now? But now I start I have started to see the other side and. I don't know what triggered that transition, but now I, you know, sort of see that feedback and take it into account and like, oh, well, thank you so much for letting me know. Like, you know, let's um, plan on the next steps. Like, let's, you know, get you another quote so that we can get that next version going. And um, and everyone's fine with it. At the beginning, I felt I just assumed that they wanted me to do things for free, but that's not the case. They actually are willing to pay for their, you know, improved version of our products. So that's, that's great. And then the other thing is that um, I was always really nervous. Oh, well, at the beginning, everyone wants their startup to have, you know, 50 people, 100 people, a million people. Um, and so at the beginning, I was, you know, like really excited to have a big team. But now it's happening. And we're doubling our team next week. So all these new people are going to come and work with us. And obviously, that's a good thing. But it's also, um, a little bit, uh, I don't know, it's going to be like an attitude adjustment, right, for our team where we used to be like a gang and now it's going to be double. So now we have to incorporate those people in our lives, uh, which, yeah. So that's something that I'm confused you about. You almost sound sorry about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God, what if they don't become part of the gang? What do we do with them? <laughs> <laughs> well, literally, so yesterday, Yesterday was Friday here. And so that was our last day as just us, like the four of us. And um, next week, there's going to be four new people. So that's a little bit, you know, excitement and anxiety at the same time. So what are you going to do to make them feel home? Do you have a plan? Well, so so we've kind of uh, divide, we're, we're doing a divide and conquer approach where each one of us is going to sort of... Um, be there for one additional person right so we have formed sort of pairs um and um so we're going to be there for them and we're going to help them you know with their day one get them um set up and get them a tour get them lunch you know get them coffee so it's going to be one person's responsibility to sort of be there for the one new person 
So you call a buddy to each one. Yeah. Lovely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you want? Who do you want to pick next? A couple of more hands have gone up. I will pick uh, Sucheta uh, from Mumbai. She was eagerly waiting. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. I was listening to everyone. It's very interesting uh, thing to think about, also. I guess so. Uh, I, I I had a couple of thoughts in mind. So generally, when you look back in on life, you mostly like things that you don't like stand out a lot, and you're like, oh, why did I do this? And you know, throughout life, like personal, professional, both. And I recently read somewhere that you they say that you know if you don't look back and cringe at certain things that you did in your past, uh, that means you've not grown as a person. because otherwise how would you have known that you know and i think that was a very interesting way to think about things and now like it's also made it easier to make decisions like in professional life because you feel like okay fine even if this goes bad you learn something from it and it's okay so i think it was a interesting thought and it's led to a lot of very uh, good conclusions both personally and professionally so it's nice so i'm still learning more so that's why it fits into this context Fantastic! You haven't given us the details, but you've given us the approach, so that's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you want to pick next? Uh, Anamika. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, I'm under the weather, so my voice is a little bit um, like croaky. <laughs> I'm based out of Dallas here, and uh, one thing I realized um, over past couple of months after pandemic hit that um, you know I have a, this very deep passion of connecting community. i want to bring people together i want to make them feel happy bring that genuine smile and then i realize i also have passion to create something to take risk and that's where i kind of uh, in the past few months i have connected my entrepreneurship spirit um to bringing the community together in building something that i can put forward for the society to look into so i built called a company called pronoun thank you.org that will help me do both interesting lovely who do you want to pick next vanita dr okay. vanita prashad <laughs> yeah i she spoke i have shared it okay. yes she spoke okay. earlier <laughs> yeah okay so let's see who hasn't gone somia shukla hi um, i'm somia from lucknow and i think lately i've really started believing in destiny which means like you're meant to do what you're meant to do so uh, while i was in my college days you know i had to quit medicine because i felt nauseatic looking at the cavities but i've landed up uh, you know um, having a health tech startup so uh, with dr parents i had this responsibility on me to become a doctor but i had to quit it because i used to feel nauseatic but i landed up uh, having this uh, health tech startup so i think i was just meant to make a difference and impact in healthcare so i think i've started believing in destiny that way brilliant you got to do what you got to do so yeah <laughs> interesting okay who's left yeah it's me go for it shweta yeah so uh, i'm shweta co-founder of agramit and uh, uh, we are agri based startup so so uh, many times talking with the uh, maybe investors or other uh, persons uh, i face the uh, issue like uh, what to prefer like impact or your business uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of my business approach so that is uh, Uh, and and um, most of the time i see the people are uh, looking for the business how you make money uh, rather than impact so this is uh, what also uh, making changes in my approach also like uh, what actually uh, what we are doing that you should uh, talk with the people or <laughs> you should uh, talk with the people what they expect from you so this is what uh, uh, is uh, going in my head and and i'm uh, trying to figure out uh, what the uh, uh, what should be the approach uh, to go about that so okay is, lovely yeah, yeah. good good journey to be on shweta very nice is there anyone who's left out very quickly five yes. guys i'm i'm there vinita yes yes sahil so um, 
what changed me, I was also very uh, big risk taker in 2020 beginning. I had a number of shares, even a bit of Bitcoin and Ethereum, etc. But where I was following a lot of uh, Chinese uh, journalists uh, on Twitter. And uh, I, I was wondering why we are not in India uh, getting COVID till now. But somehow I was very, very scared. And I thought this is the end of the world. And by March, when it came to India, I was uh, convinced that I'm going to kick the bucket. So I sold everything. Like the uh, daredevil turned into a mouse. So I sold everything. I was so scared. And then uh, uh, during the COVID, what happened was I lost my uncle. I lost a couple of people. And then I saw the ladies say, uh, in India, I don't know about other countries, they just don't know how to handle their finances. They were like totally at a loss because they leave their financial obligations, everything to the husbands, fathers, whoever, even if they're earning or they are entrepreneurs themselves. This is a weird phenomenon and I, I am totally in charge of my financial. So then I came up with this venture, FinPrompt, which is now already, uh, the app is there on iOS and uh, on uh, Android, where it is a reminder and it's a compilation of all the assets, financial obligations, what you have. I've started it off as a reminder app, which you do not have anywhere in India. And we are upgrading it so that we... Uh, um, uh, we are uh, inviting all the aggregators like mutual funds, insurance, a one-stop solution, especially for women. We are holding workshops. We already have a number of downloads, women downloads. We are telling them they run to their husbands or fathers and find out the days, but still they're doing it. They've started them all. So that's my venture. So something to look forward to. I think I found my Ikigai after uh, selling off everything. So that's it. Got it. Lovely, lovely. I think so. You know, it's been such a nice and humbling experience over the last half an hour to just hear so many stories of grit, of determination and going out there and making it happen. So kudos to each one of you. I think absolutely brilliant. I hope you've not missed anyone. We've covered everyone out there. Anyone who hasn't yet spoken? All right. Now let's get into action. We've got the drill. We've understood the basic introduction. We've done some ice breaking. Let's now get into action. What are we going to do? We're going to do and put you all into breakout rooms, which I will just assign very quickly. Three expectations, and I've been told that you guys are super intelligent and brilliant. So for those who don't need to make notes, pen, paper, and I'm going to do make Melton notes. Lovely. So Vanita already says it's all right here. Okay, three ask. The first ask, part A of the exercise as a group. This is a group activity. Part A of the exercise is three bullet points on what are your expectations in the next one hour that we spend together. All right. So I need only three bullet points of what are your expectations from this session. Part B of the activity is you need to pick one person outside of your group who resonated with you the most. And you just write the person's name. And three bullet points below, why did that person resonate with you the most? Part C of the activity is, you will write my name, Sahil Nair is dash, 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 dash. So you can have three things that you have picked up in the last 30 minutes. And you can say Sahil Nair is whatever, whatever, whatever. And that is basis, his virtual background, the way he spoke, the way he's interacted, whatever, whatever, whatever. So what have you sensed, what have you perceived in the last 35 minutes of who I am as a person? Okay, and that's entirely your perception. Good, bad, ugly, absolutely fine. I'm not gonna feel bad. So go out there, three activities. Activity A, I'll quickly repeat, is three expectations from the session that you have. Activity B is pick any one person outside of your group who as a group you believe resonated with you the most and three reasons why the person resonated with you the most, active listening. And the third activity is you will write down a sentence to say Sahil Nayar is dash, and it could be a sentence with a couple of words. And you have to give me three reasons, which are data points that tell you why you have arrived at that sentence. Any questions, anyone? Crystal clear? Crystal. Yes. Crystal clear. 
All right, I'm going to put you into three breakout rooms. You'll have approximately four to five people, five to six people in each group. And here you go. It's 9.09 .09 in my watch here, exactly 10 minutes, and I'll pull you back. So 10 minutes, go crack it. Please move to your rooms. Okay, opening it now. Farah, let me know if you're not able to click on the breakout room and I can- No, it's all it. done. Everyone's moved. It's oh, only, everyone. yeah, it's okay. just you, uh, Dharti and me, uh, Fireflies. Note taker, Sayanta. Sayanta, are you here in the meeting or? Um... Has Shamima also moved? Let me check. Yes. yes yeah, she's yes. also moved to room three. Okay. Shamima's back. Hey, I just wanted to check if they are able to get in. And yeah, yeah, everyone's gone to the rooms. I can see it here on the console. On fireflies, there's... Uh... Fireflies is note taker. Oh, it's okay. A, All right. It's an AI. Okay. Yeah. All right, okay. And Dharti is here. Dharti has oh, a yes. So that's yes. okay. Everyone's gone to their room, so that's good. That's right, yes. That's great. Do we have a hard stop at 10, uh, which is India time, or can we stretch for another 15 minutes? Um, well, the I'll schedule try. is until 10. We'll see how long people want to stay back. I think in India, it's maybe a little late, but uh, we have people from uh, US and Europe as well. So maybe we could ask. We played by the year. Yeah, let's yeah. go for it.
screen. Yep, yep, here I have. Um, I just just give me a minute. I'll have to just <laughs> make this. Just go to the share screen, screen button, click on it, and just share your desktop. You're on mute. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just uh, putting my settings on to share my screen. No worries. You need some time. You want us to go to group two and come back to you guys? Sure, please. I I just will that be helpful. Final. Thank thank you. Yep yep. Okay. That'll be. Yeah. Samia and gang. Uh, can I present the slide? Yeah yeah. Go for it. All yours. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. This is a very bad slide. So... But don't worry. We're not judging. <laughs> okay. Uh, basically, uh, what three things we expect uh, in next one hour or one and a half hour is we want to understand how to hire best talent within, uh, you know, in that one hour four phone call or a two hour four phone call. Uh, team management that is physical team management because everyone has their different point of view, and we want to understand how to uh, bring them on the same table uh, so that the uh, they work cordially. And the third is online management. Since we are working uh, right now from the geography. Sorry, uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. No worries. So uh, since right now we all are working, you know, from different geographies and we want to understand how can we manage team in a better way when we are working online. Lovely, let's move on. So the expectations are rock solid, clear. I'll request okay. you to put this onto the chat after you finish screening and the next group present. Just put the expectations in the chat window. Okay. Uh, second, uh, I think our thoughts resonate with Smriti's thought because what she has expressed as an entrepreneur, every entrepreneur goes through the same kind of mental anxiety. They are quite defensive about their products and later on, they realize that they have to evolve or they have to include other people. Okay. Third is Sahil Nair is a good leader. Um, he's approachable and positive person. He is result oriented because the kind of task he has given us, he wants to understand what we are expecting from his, uh, you know, from this, uh, uh, from his talk or you know, one or two hour of presentation. And he's a fantastic listener for sure. Alrighty, let's move to the next group. Thank you so much, Nupur and gang. Well done. Just put the expectations on the chat window so we'll keep track of that. So, Nani, are you ready or should we move to Smriti, Suchita and... Uh, uh, Sorry, I would, I would try to one, try to share my screen once more. Otherwise, I would need time. No problem. Sure. So, please, please just give me a minute. Sure. And I'll, I'll see. Uh, sure. Actually, I'm on MacBook. I, I'm on MacBook, so <laughs> I find okay, any, any okay, there are a lot Apple of, lovers. Oh, it's come okay. up, it's come up, it's yep, come yep, up, it's come yep, up. Yep, lovely, yep. lovely, lovely. Go for it. All right, yep. Okay, so uh, our expectations from the session are, uh, number one, it's uh, team management and session management. Uh, then uh, I think th this would be common, like commonly it was uh, from us. The second one is the same, like manage people and how do we build a team. Got and, it. And the third is like, how do we bring in the culture and, and retain the value system in our team, what we had initially? Okay. Yeah. So then uh, whom, do, whom do we resonate to? So this was a kind of tricky question. Like we could not understand as a team. So, but then Monica felt that she resonates to Sahil. And, and the reasons why she felt was that uh, he is living his talk. He was demonstrating what he was teaching and he was making everyone participate. With, with these points so she felt that and i think this also answers the third question but we have points for that sahil is uh first is yet to be known we have to see what he'll be delivering in this next one hour and he's a good listener also he demonstrated this right from the start so we justify that uh, by saying it uh, he's leaving demonstration of what he's teaching to us and he's eng engaging us good all right, lovely. Just put the expectations on the chat, Sonali and yes. gang. Uh, thank you so much. Good job. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Let's move to the trio. S, S, and V. Uh, 
I love the second point. How do you judge and trust people while hiring? <laughs> Quite an important one. As, as you can see it, uh, the first one is motivating your team because how do you, obviously, no explanation required. How do you judge and trust people while hiring, which I think someone also mentioned. And general decision making in management, which is like in the thin lines, how do you make a decision between culture versus skill or versus being your friend versus a boss or all of that, which happens when you're just scaling a team. We all had different people, I think, for our person that we resonated with, Vanita, uh, especially, I think, uh, the other Vanita also uh, resonated really well because they had very similar life events. Uh, Sahil, you, that was <laughs> a part because especially the problem of release, how do you find a release and um, how do you manage energies once you're emerging out of the pandemic? And we found Monica is really interesting because she, she couldn't figure out Indian society, neither can we. So <laughs> that was that was funny. So I thought we had semblance. to Absolutely yeah. semblance there, Monica. And Sahil, yes, you're a very creative leader because you've been very patient. Uh, this is not an easy thing to do when multiple people from different places are talking about very random things about their life. So you have to be very patient. And uh, you're very warm as a personality that comes through on Zoom, which helps people like open up, which is again great. And uh, creative, because this was a, definitely a very interesting exercise and made us all think even in this really short span of time. And now I want to add that this is a very cool thing to do so that a bunch of people say really nice things about you. So I want to add this into like my team meetings and stuff from <laughs> now on. So I'll just say this is an exercise. Well, we're going to tell you, you're going to tell me what you think. So Sucheta's only got one takeaway that she's going to do with her team. So Smithy, you have four yes. people, team doubling up Monday. Right. <laughs> you can do something similar. I'm definitely going to do this now. <laughs> yeah, we, we were actually talking about that when we were making this list. We're like, I need to do this on Monday. So, got it. so yeah. it's, it's much better than the cliche of telling me about yourself, which HR yeah, right. normally asks. Tell me about yourself, which is like so boring and so cliche. So I think this is different. And I think so what it does, and you realize that right, you spent one hour together and I haven't even scratched the surface, right? You don't even know what I'm talking about or what I'm going to talk about. But let me tell you one thing, which is the cardinal rule, which is the Bible, which is whichever you believe in, put your hand on your heart and remember this for the rest of your life. If you spend the first hour and again, it's not just because we've done one hour together here, but you spend the first hour building relationships, building connect, building rapport, building trust. Work will happen like this. Work will happen like this. Because what will happen is two things will happen. Number one, intent very clearly gets communicated in the right manner. Number two, a safe space gets created to listen. He's not here to show off his knowledge. He's not here to tell us one, two, three, what to do. Because collectively, you guys know far more than me. Number one. Number two, a lot of people on this call are way elder to what I am. And they have seen a lot more Diwalis or you've seen a lot more Christmas than I have seen. Right? You have a lot more gray hair than I do. And therefore, you know more than me. So I'm not here to tell you how to build your team or how to motivate your team. But what I will definitely do in the next 30 minutes, because I have time for the next 30 minutes, I'm more than happy to extend if you guys are comfortable. But the time allotted is the next 29 minutes now. But in 29 minutes, we will create magic. And the reason why I'm so confident we'll be able to create magic is because each one of you have done two things beautifully. One, you've done active listening. And that does not come if you didn't put down exercise number two on your slide well, which means you were actively listening to other people's stories. And the moment you do that, everybody on this group knows that within this group, people will somehow have some kind of affiliation to one another, not just because Thai woman is getting you together, but because there was an interest the interest got created because you saw your story in them and their story in you. And when that happens, Smriti, just as a case in point, when the two people of the four people who come in on Monday see that, you know, this is home for us. 
it's not just about a buddy or having coffee or having lunch. Those are typically what I call as the periphery. But in the first one hour is all about saying, this is the space where we are going to be us. We are going to be me. I can be myself and you can be yourself and Monica can be just who she is without the fear of saying, oh, you know what? Smriti is going to evaluate me for the first one week to say, am I doing well? Am I not doing well? And when people have this comfort that they can be who they are and you get the right people on board, which is very, very important, and then get out of their way, they'll do wonders. But the biggest mistake we often do is get the best people on board and then tell them what to do. And that's where we start messing things up. We may not really tell them what to do, but we'll keep that vision, 30,000 feet vision. And that could be very, very claustrophobic. And then at times we'll come down like the eagle at, at 20 feet to micromanage. And that just doesn't work. That just doesn't work. All right. So I have all the expectations in and I'm conscious of time and I'm going to now share my screen. I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of dope on what I typically call as a little bit here and there for you to really flip it up and ask you a question as we begin. Do each one of you ask this question to yourself. Do I need HR? Yes, no in the chat. And if there's a maybe, I know you're sitting on the fence, but that's also absolutely fine. Go to the chat, everyone, and tell me, do I need HR? And I'm going to look at the chat for responses. Nupur says yes. Vanita says no. Brilliant. No, 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 no. Okay, Suchita says no as well. Monica says no as well. Vanita says yes. This is a very interesting group. The baby garage has raised her hand. Yes, baby garage. That sounds really interesting. I don't know. It's very intriguing. I don't know why, but baby garage. No, it's just, just a, a raise hand by mistake, but I was just going to write down yes in the chat box. Okay, not sure, not yet. I love this answer. Smriti, that's brilliant. Not yet. I'll give you the answer. The answer is you don't need HR. You don't need HR till you're a minimum of 100 people. You don't need HR. But even if you are one, hiring one more, you need HR capability. And there is a lot of difference, ladies, between having HR and having HR capability. Because your first 100 people will decide the next 1,000 that you hire. Hear me very carefully. I'm going to repeat one more time. The first 100 people you hire will decide the next thousand that you hire. And if you're doubling headcounts with me today as whatever, two to four or four to eight, when that eight becomes 80 and that 80 becomes 800, that is when you're going to see a quantum shift in the manner in which you guys do work, in the manner in which you scale up your business, in the manner in which each one of you make a difference, not just to society, but more importantly, to people who work with you. So I'll repeat one more time on this slide, 30 seconds. Do you need HR? The answer is no. Do you need HR capability? The answer is from the word go. Because if you don't have that, if you don't have an HR orientation or an HR bent of mind, you will start making cardinal mistakes on day one. And by the time you have a team of 50 or a team of 100, or as you grow in size, it becomes difficult to correct those mistakes. Everyone with me so far? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, Sonali is nodding. So is Suchita and Smithy. People who I can see on my screen right now. I asked you this question. You gave me the answer. I'm going to pick those as expectations and we'll try and wrap the expectations one by one as we go through the next. Many of you all asked me, how do we really interview? Trust me, did I know your questions? No, I didn't. Did anyone tell me in advance what your questions are going to be? No, no one told me. But clearly, as you take your startup to a larger organization, your competence on people assessment has to be top notch. And here, my recommendation to each one of you is, if you are not able to get it right, 
there is no harm in asking for help. You don't need to hire an HR person. There are a lot of people who can help you just with interviewing, just with meeting people, just as a sounding board. And I am more than happy to volunteer my time to this cause with each one of you. If you need any help, you just say, Sahil, this is the person, this is the role. Can you have a 15 minute chat or a half an hour conversation and let me know if this is the person right for my team? I'll tell you why. And why is this so critical? This is just so critical because in the hierarchy of competence, if you don't get this right and you don't keep getting this right, you will keep making mistakes. Because a wrong intuition, moving ahead gives you a wrong analysis. Even if you get the analysis right, you've got to get the intuition right. And many people tell me that, Sahil, within the first five minutes, I decide whether I want to hire someone or not. And the remaining 25 minutes I use to validate my impression in the first five minutes. Different people have different styles of interviewing. But the reality is, you've got to get someone who can see the world through your eyes. You got to get someone who can see what you can't see. You got to get someone who can actually come and tell you, no, I don't think this is right. And all of this has a precondition to say, you have to have it within you to be able to have people like this around you. If you're someone who wants a yes person all across, it's not going to work. If you want someone to say, oh, but I am from this part of the world, I speak this language, or I have this kind of an upbringing, and therefore I want someone similar like me, it will never work. So my suggestion and recommendation and request to each one of you is to go out there and get people who are not like you. Anyone can tell me why? What does it bring in? It brings diversity. Yeah, so diversity is very important, right? Yeah. Brilliant. I told you, you guys are very intelligent people. It brings in diversity. Why is diversity important? Because that, that gives us a different perspective. Yeah. Why is the perspective important? Why is a different uh, perspective important? It's very like, like if, if we are doing any, anything, uh, there might be a pro, pro for that and there will be a con. And if I am uh, into that, like... Uh, Smithy said that we are in uh, love with our product, but there is somebody who, who needs something else. Got it. Be more fruitful. So, Vanita, if I have too many multiple perspectives on the table, I could have conflicts. Yes or no? Yes. 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 But constructive uh, conflicts are very important to build up. Interesting. So, what is the constructive conflict? Uh, means like good discussions, there, there can be a good challenge that, okay, this can be done this way, I will do this. And uh, there might be a challenge between the team members that I will do it in this way and I will demonstrate to you that this can be done. Got it. It can Perfect. be a, a, a time-saving thing. It can be a different approach. There might be different things uh, done. Superb. So, Smriti, why don't you tell us, how is it that we can bring in diversity? What are the different kinds of diversity? This is something we had to go through uh, while we were hiring. So, um, so at the beginning, um, everyone on the team, uh, you know. Sorry, sorry, like Smriti. We, sorry, time, time, out, time. Out. Give me bullet points. Let's cut okay. the narrative aside. We we are okay, now galloping. Right. So let's pick okay, pace. Right, Give right, me bullet right. points. Yeah. Okay. So I think we need to put aside political views. Uh, we need Again, to put aside. Let's not like, no, 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 no. Let's not say what we need to keep aside. Let's focus on what do we want. So diversity of. Okay, got it. So diversity of opinions. Okay. Diversity of um, approaches. Diversity of skills. So you gave me opinions, skill, uh, skills, and opinions and thoughts, perspectives is one category. Skills okay. is the other category. Anyone else? Give me a third category. Samia. Diversity of mm, I experience. Think yeah. Sorry. Maybe experience, yes. Experience, lovely. So Nali, yeah. diversity of I'm still quick, quick, quick. <laughs> okay, quick, quick, Sujata, Monica. 
gender, religion, race, all of that. Like get okay. as many different minorities as possible as well. Got it. Nupur? I was going to say cultures. Cultures, absolutely, Monica Nupur. Shweta? Mm. I, I think culture and okay. even uh, uh, gender equality, you can say, in the organization. Got it. Got it. Vinita More? Uh, gender. I'll always go with gender. All right. Let me tell you what I did in the last 18 months. In the last 18 months, I hired 10 candidates who were PWD candidates. People with disabilities. All right. I hired someone who was completely blind you really have to work with someone who is a person with disability. And let me tell you, I don't know how many of y'all have interacted with such people, but they will blow your mind away. Because the way they think and their coping mechanisms are just so different that you and I will never ever be able, be able to think of something in that direction. And therefore, while many of you have experienced diversity, have heard of diversity, have even gone ahead to the context of calling it out in terms of gender, age, opinions, perspectives, one thing I encourage all of you is at any point in time, if you can work with someone who is a person with disability or a person with autism, get those people. Because the way they think is out of the world. It's not just you're doing CSR to get someone on board, but you're actually helping someone in terms of giving a platform to them to value add to your thinking and your organization. And we've significantly benefited, I'm sure you would as well. Very quickly, coming back to the triangle, anyone wants to explain to me what is your understanding of this hierarchy of competence? Anyone, what's your takeaway from this? Yes, no, maybe, get it, don't get it. Uh, for me, um, if I may, it's, it's like um, a process. You might start with the wrong intuition and take your learnings. You might even at first do a wrong an analysis and get more feedback until you reach the right analysis and that will help you uh, and lead you to the right intuition. Brilliant. Monica, I think so. that was really, really bang on and see how it plays out. It plays out just so beautifully. Sorry, I jumped the slide. It plays out just so beautifully. You move from the first box, which is straight out here, the unconscious incompetence, right? The unconscious incompetence. You're actually unaware of existence or relevance of skill. You're unaware of a skill deficiency you deny the relevance or usefulness of the skill. So imagine none of us in this group are in this quadrant, but if you were to come back and tell me what is diversity? Why do you think diversity is important, Sahil? I don't think diversity is important. I am from this part of the world. I know people here. I know people who stay close to my house. I know they passed out from my school or college. They are brilliant. We all think alike. We all are from you know, birds of a feather flock together and I will pick only those people who I know. Now, if you all said that, but had you to say that, you would be in this quadrant. All right, are you with me so far? Let's move on. Let's move up the hierarchy. So from an unconscious incompetence, we move the unaway, we move to a conscious incompetence where we move to wrong analysis. So I'm aware of the skill and its relevance. I know what the incompetence is. I understand that skill will improve effectiveness. A classic case where some of us are here to say, oh, do I need HR? I need team building. I need to be in a space where I can evaluate people categorically in terms of figuring out whether I can trust them, whether I can hire them, are they the right people? How do I grow my team? So there is a conscious element of what I need. 
but maybe I don't know how to do it as well because I've not done it as much or I want to be sure, I want to be secure and therefore there's an element of incompetence. From here, you come back right here, which is where from incompetence, the consciousness remains the same. You move from incompetence to competence. And that's when you can actually perform the skill reliably at your will. You need to concentrate to perform the skill and you can exercise the skill without supervision. So let's say some of you all tell me, Sahil, we're doing a couple of interviews. Why don't you join us, help us build the team? We do that for three, four months. And the sixth month onwards, you tell me, Sahil, thank you so much. I've shadowed you on a couple of interviews. I completely get it now. What's the role? What's the skill sets? What's the aptitude? What's the attitude? I will now independently hire. Or I will now build my team to 50 and I have three people who will ensure that they meet every candidate who comes into my organization. You really build that. And that's when you really come here, which is the unconscious competence to say the skill becomes second nature and some skills possible while doing other things. And more importantly, you can teach others the skills that you master. And therefore, while this model, I have applied it to assessment on people because that's one of the most important things for each one of you as you build your teams, you can apply this model in any aspect of your life. You can apply it to decision-making, you can apply it to analytical skills, you can apply it to how do you engage your team effectively. You can apply it to how do you retain the key people on your team. You can apply it to saying, how do I ensure that I remunerate the right people to retain them in a competitive environment? And I'm going to pause now because I see Samya's hand going up. Samya, unmute yourself and let's hear you. Yes. Yeah, so my question is about moving up from unconscious incompetence to conscious competence. Wouldn't that come with experience? Of so, course. Yeah. Right. So, so while we screen people, would we not have to understand, have an understanding of their experience because you gradually grow, right? You're absolutely right, Samya. And therefore, uh, when you move to unconscious competence is the stage where you are, when within the first five minutes, your gut tells you, this is the perfect person. This is the lady who I need on my team. And then the remaining 25 minutes, all you do is ask questions or put the person through an assessment to only validate that intuition. Because you've done it so much over a period of time. Like for example, in the last 11 years of my career, I would have met minimum 25,000 people who have interviewed. And therefore, when I've interviewed someone from a data scientist to a taxation person, to a finance and accounts person, to a lawyer, to a chartered accountant, I can tell you exactly when I see a chartered accountant to say, what's going to be the challenge with this individual should you take the person on your team? Right? And that, as you very rightly said, Soumya, comes with experience. All right. Any other questions? Anyone? More than happy to answer any questions that you have on this as we quickly pick up some more speed. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I have one last question. So, sorry. No okay, sorry. Sorry, you continue. Okay, thank you. So here, uh, my question is regarding the, um, the the assessment of people. Would it be different from one function to another? So, for example, if I'm hiring someone who's more technical, uh, so would should it be different? So here, I would say there are metrics that you should define as part of your interview assessment. Broadly, I can tell you the clusters, but basis of the rules that you have, it is best that you define the metrics. Cluster number one, as a principal, at a junior level, I would hire for attitude and I would train for skill. So at a junior level, there are three things that you look out for. One, is attitude, second is skill, and third is knowledge. I call it ASK, A-S-K, -A, attitude, skill, and knowledge. A person with a lot of knowledge 
but lack of application is of no use. That person should go and do a PhD, should be a great research scholar. A person with a lot of skill, but with the wrong attitude will be counterproductive to my operations. I don't want someone on the team who has a bad attitude. A person with a great attitude, but not willing to learn, wouldn't qualify to have a great attitude. And therefore, the buck stops at attitude. Now, the question is, while I saw very clearly and we had in the beginning of the session, I gave you three activities to do activity A, B, and C. So Cheta really pointed it out to say, oh, that is a very nice way for people to say good things about you. But having done this so many times, I wasn't really waiting for people to say nice things about me. I was actually waiting to see what is it that you guys are perceiving about what I am telling you. And therefore, a brilliant interviewee is the one who makes the interviewer ask the same questions that the interviewer wants to be asked. I'll repeat, a brilliant interviewee is the one who makes the interviewer ask those questions that he or she wants to be asked. And if as an interviewer or as a founder or as a startup lead, you guys don't realize that, you're going to go with the flow. And six months later, you'll wonder, oh my God, why did this person didn't turn out to be the person I thought he or she was? And that's exactly because that person took you on a walk without you realizing. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Attitude, skill, knowledge, ASK. Once that's sorted, you need to then figure out what is it that you're going to ask the individual that is going to tell you, yes, this person has the right attitude for my organization. Or this person is the right person to really come out there Join my team because that will make a great click. Yes, Smriti. Yeah, so question. Obviously, you want the person to have a positive attitude, but how do you evaluate that in an interview? You tell me. Think about it. What did I do in the first 30 minutes? Mm. Build trust or confident, like show confidence. Um, then listen. Was I evaluating? No. I was. Okay. Did you realize? You didn't. Mm -hmm. And that is what an experienced interviewer would do. Because the moment you make an interviewee feel that he or she is being evaluated, you will have two kinds of people. One who will go all out to tell you how good they are and the other who will start feeling not so good about it. Because then subconsciously, Smriti, what you will start doing is you'll start judging. And this session mm -hmm. is recorded. And if you get a copy of the session, just go back and hear those two, three minutes where you spoke about your team. And you spoke about, oh, we have some people coming in and we are doubling head count. And if those, and play, and trust me, if you're an open leader, play that video to those guys and ask them, how do you feel? And they'll come back mm -hmm. and tell you after hearing this, we don't feel very nice because there's a level of skepticism. Now, the reality is you and I both may be very skeptic because we're human. We have emotions, we have feelings, we have apprehensions, we have anxiety because we're human, right? But the point is, how do you not show that out? Because exactly. the person on the other side is equally anxious. The person on the other side is also thinking, will this work? How do I make it work? I need to prove Smriti right because she's chosen me and now I need to honor her faith, her commitment and her belief in me. So there is a pressure on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Now, if you're going yeah. to add to that pressure with your anxiety, are you doing good or are you doing worse? Worse, definitely. Yeah. Right. 
That's yeah. part one of your question. Part two of your question is without making anyone feel that you're evaluating them, which is what I did. What did I do? I put the focus on you. I put the focus on all 18 of you, right? But I was sitting and evaluating. I was sitting and in my own head and in the space between my ears, I was thinking, is Dr. Prasad thinking, Are yaar, where has this kid come from? I'm 50. And she said this, if you heard her carefully, and I'm doing my startup now. Samia said something about Lucknow. You saw how Samia reacted when I asked her, is this a virtual background? Sonali had a young kid who came in the video. Sonali has been someone who's been talking multiple times because there may be people in the vicinity and she's at home. And of course, she's dealing with a lot of stuff. But her attention span, I can tell you, is among the highest in the group. And if I ask her three questions of what happened in the last one hour, she'll give me all the three answers. And I can bet my life savings on that. Through the entire process, I was evaluating. But mm -hmm. I never gave anyone a whiff of the fact that I was evaluating. Not because I'm a pro at it, but the only reason is because I put the spotlight on you. Mm -hmm. And when the spotlight is on you, you're worrying about looking good. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you're not reflecting back or not boomeranging back to see what am I doing. Mm -hmm. With me so far? Yeah. yeah. Therefore, what you need to categorically do is evaluate people but evaluate them after spending the first 15 minutes of putting them into a comfort zone. Because then it's like, oh, Smithy, we're meeting for the first time, but it feels as if I know you since very long. And I'm not flirting with you here, but all I'm trying to tell you is you give me the warmth. You give me the comfort. Right. You give me the thing that, oh, I'm talking to a friend. I'm not talking to, oh, the co-founder of Rara's 3D. Are you with me? Yeah, And yeah. therefore, that becomes a lot more easy for me to be myself. Yeah, And in the process, what you're doing at the back of your mind is to say, while this is the real Sahil, and he may be very good as who he is, is he the best person for my organization? Will he fit in? Because it's not about as much as getting the right person in, but it's as much about getting the right fit in. Mm -hmm. Because if it doesn't fit in well, you may have a right person, but the right person will keep banging the wrong door. Mm -hmm. And therefore, yeah. you may, you don't need HR, but you need HR capability. Yeah. Sorry, you were saying something. Oh, no, this is good. Um, so I was, I was just thinking about the two hires. So one is somebody <laughs> that we went out and recruited. And this person is brilliant but they don't know that they're brilliant. So we had to bring them that realization that they deserve to be on this team. And for them- Can I pause, them, you, can I pause yeah. you here? Mm -hmm. Sit back and reflect, and I don't want to hijack the conversation with everybody else. Maybe we can chat of course, offline. Yeah. But sit back and reflect. You said they don't know they're brilliant, right? Mm -hmm. Are you sure they don't know they're brilliant or were they underplaying themselves? <laughs> It's think possible. It. I'll leave you with I think that they were part. very humble. I think they were extremely humble about, you know, what skills they have. And they weren't, I don't think they were deliberately trying to underplay it because we were not, when we met, we were not having this conversation that we're going to hire them. There was no so what was, discussion about- What was the about, need for humility? Yeah. Think about um, that, see. I, yeah. All I'm trying to say is that I don't know those two people. You know them better mm -hmm. than anyone else. But sit back and reflect. If someone is being really humble, it's not that they don't know their competence. Mm -hmm. Right? It's your first statement was, and again, I'm not attacking you, but all I'm trying to say is your first statement was, they didn't know how brilliant they were. The second statement was, they were humble. And if you spend the next 30 minutes with me on this conversation, we will exactly know how those two people were. Uh huh. Are you with me? Yeah. Yep. Because what will end up happening is those two people are not in the question here, but your understanding of them will shift. And that is the entire process of building HR capability. That's like going mm -hmm. to say wrong intuition, wrong analysis. Oh, wrong. Oh, they're not, they're not creative. No, but they're very creative, but they don't know. Oh, but actually they know it. 
but they're being very humble. And from the wrong analysis, you move to the right analysis, and then you finally move to the right intuition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm conscious of time. I don't know how you guys are doing on time, but I think so. It's it's on time. I have one more slide to go, but uh, I don't know. I want to just ask everybody, do you have 15 more minutes or I'm happy to wrap up in the next five? Fine okay, by me. Um, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Fine. Anyone is a no? If you're getting bored, uh, you think wherever you landed yourself, you want to escape? I think we can go on Sahel. All yes, right, thank you. Wanted. This is the crux. If you can crack this, ladies, you're home. I say what I do, and I do what I say. And just look at this. Just have a look at this. This is brilliant. This is like saying others' rights and needs take precedence over mine. To saying I clearly express that we both have rights and needs. Many of you all ask me about team management, ask me about employee management. How do you really engage with your colleagues? From moving, being passive to saying, if I say something, will the person feel bad? Will the person feel hurt? I thought Sahil in the first 30 minutes was wasting so much of time and now he's asking for 15 minutes extra. This is not even fair, right? So from being emotionally dishonest, to appropriately being honest, from being indirect to being expressive, from being inhibited to being self-confident and self-enhancing, from blaming to being empathetic to emotions of all involved and not being apologetic. You move from passive to passive, aggressive to aggressive to assertive. This is a classic case of how each one of us operate and we operate in these preferred styles, not because this is who we are, but subconsciously, because what ends up happening is that we don't want to hurt people. And in the process of not hurting people, our assessment actually goes wrong. And by the time we realize this to get the right analysis, we find it difficult to speak about it, to communicate. And that's where we mess it up, because then, we become inappropriately honest. We say things that we could rather keep our mouth shut. We get direct, we get aggressive, we get attacking, we get blaming, we get controlling, and more importantly, self-enhancing at the expense of others. It's a classic case, right, Smithy? Imagine if I had to just go on and on with that conversation and keep telling you of how you messed up the conversation with those two people. They're going to say, dude, what's wrong? Like, listen, just back off. Just back off. Why are you getting so aggressive? Right? But the real point is that I was just trying to be assertive, but I boldly insisted about my rights, my needs, and those should prevail because I know HR better than you. And I am a subject matter expert. You may be a founder, co-founder, whatever, but I am a subject matter expert. Versus where we started a very passive conversation to saying others' rights and needs need to take precedence over mine. And finally, we graduate to a space to say, I clearly express that we both have rights and needs. Maybe you're right. Maybe they were humble. Maybe they are very creative and there's a part of them that they didn't want to talk about. Now, the question, Smriti, is what are you going to do on Monday? Let's talk about that. You see mm -hmm. how we move to a very assertive conversation mm -hmm. as compared to a very aggressive one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what appeared sometime back as Sahil being very direct, very expressive and very attacking on Smriti, now is become very appropriately being honest, self-enhancing, mm -hmm. being expressive, being confident to share my thoughts. And of course, being very empathetic to the fact that Smriti spent time discussing with them. Smriti spent executive time thinking about whether they're the right people to come on board. And Smithy thought about the fact that, okay, they're joining my team. What can I do as a body process to help them settle in well? Mm -hmm. Right? And if now you want to do a demo, ask Sonali, what was the last sentence I said? And she'll give you the answer. All right, Sonali, kidding. what was the last sentence? <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding. Sorry, that was good. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, let's let's focus on this, ladies. Uh, it's show time. It's show time, and you really gotta get this one perfect. Because if you get this, I think it would be worth your time to be on this session. Many times, each one of us in our roles either are very high on prominence or high on gravitas, right? And I would have loved to do this as a workshop, but then I would need a minimum of three hours to actually take you through this and make you experience each one of this. I'm just doing what they call a rapid fire very quickly and running through it, but I wish we had more time. But the reality is, if you look at Steve Jobs, where was he? High prominence, high gravitas. What do you think he was? Low gravitas, low prominence. Anyone? Steve Jobs? I think high uh, high gravitas. I think. Okay. Yeah, because uh, yeah, he has this understanding and uh, to express himself clearly with his okay. uh, yeah. All right. What about prominence? I think it was low on prominence. Yeah. He was not making himself the expert, but focusing, putting the focus on the others. Brilliant. What about Donald Trump? <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> you see the contrast? You see the yeah. contrast, ladies? And that is how each one of you need to play through this, because each one of you will definitely have a preferred style or a preferred quadrant. Right? What did I do in the beginning? I was low on gravitas. I was low on prominence. I was creating connections. I was building rapport. I was focusing on the relationship. Then what did I do? I moved to the high energy quadrant. I created engagement. I built excitement. I got you guys to do an activity. I got some music in. I played it there. And I got high prominence, low gravitas in this quadrant. From here, I very quickly moved here. I wanted to establish dialogue. I wanted more of you to talk, communicate. I reduced my prominence, put the spotlight on you, started engaging into a conversation. I wanted to create conversation with us. And now towards the end, as a leader, I'm focusing on results. High prominence, high gravitas, we built clarity. We've established credibility. We need output. You guys have invested one and a half or two hours of your time in whatever time zone you are in. You have to get the value because if you don't get the value, it's not your time well spent. And if each one of you can use these two by two matrix in your life very, very subconsciously, and trust me, when I do an eight hour workshop on this, it actually take, it takes eight hours for people to understand this because we get into the definition of what is prominence. We get into the behaviors of what would look like being prominent. We get into a space of when you talk to people, are you really being perceived with high prominence or high gravitas? And through those role plays, a lot of people learn a lot of things and they challenge their own beliefs. They challenge their own inhibitions. They challenge their own mannerisms, their behaviors and their interactions. But given that this was a very crunched one, I thought, let me at least introduce this concept to you so that you can figure out when you gotta be in a high energy zone, you gotta be low on gravitas and high on prominence. When you want to focus on relationships, you play it very low on gravitas and prominence. I didn't start off with saying, hello, this is Sahil Nair. I'm a senior associate director with KPMG in India, blah, 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 blah. That would have been here. I played very low. I didn't even introduce myself. I didn't add to the introduction. I just got started. And from here, the, the half an hour, 45 minutes on building relationship pumping in energy, coming to learning, and then finally focusing on results. So that's pretty much it from my side. My time's up. But if there are any questions that you have or you guys want to reach, be in touch. I'm available on LinkedIn, S-A-H-I-L-N-A-Y-A-R. Feel free to reach out. Feel free to message. 
uh, be in touch. Uh, Shamima has my number. I'm available on WhatsApp, Insta, everywhere. So just feel free to reach out. I'll be more than happy to help you guys in whatever way that you want. And Shamima, Dharti, Mohini, uh, Anjali, and the entire gang, uh, thank you so much for inviting me once again. Thank you very much, Sahil. That was quite a very interactive and engaging. Honestly, when you started up, I was wondering where was this going? <laughs> you proved me wrong. <laughs> no, it was very good. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Um, I just want to take actually one photograph with everybody on. Mohini, uh, you want to do that? Yeah, sure. Um, yes, sure. So I would request everybody to turn on your cameras if you can. Um, and Mohini will, I think, put us all into squares and take a pic. Okay, everyone ready? Uh, here goes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank Thank you for making that quick. I couldn't hold my stomach in that long. <laughs> You know, when I thought when he asked, I know something about Sahil. I think Sahil likes green. Your background is really nice and green. <laughs> I don't know what it's really like, but this one is very nice. But thank you everyone for joining us and uh, from all over the world and at your time frame and um, waiting for much longer as well. And Sahil, thank you again. We really appreciate you. your engagement and your inputs. And uh, if everybody wants to send any questions over to Sahil, send them over to us. And we'll be glad to see how we can get him to send you responses back. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Sahil. Thank you. Bye bye. Have, Have a good. great evening. Bye. bye. Thank you bye. so much. Thank you so bye. much, everyone. Take care. All the best. Bye. bye. Goodbye. Thank you.